A major development now in the race for mayor of Chicago. Bill Daly is now running for the job once held by his father and his brother, mayor of Chicago. Let's talk about Bill Daly. First, you should know who the Daly's are. From episode two of this web series, here's a clip. The Daly's are the most powerful family in Chicago history. Bill's father, Richard J. Daly, was mayor of Chicago for 22 years, from 1955 to 1976, and considered to be one of the most powerful men in America. His nickname, Boss. His son and Bill's older brother, Richard M. Daly, was also mayor for another 22 years. The Daly's have a very complicated history. On one hand, they transformed Chicago into a national and international city. On the other, the elder Daly was known for widespread corruption within his administration and for creating policies blatantly racist towards Chicago's black communities. And the younger Daly ran up the largest deficits in Chicago history. And those decisions are still affecting mostly poor communities of color today. There are two ways you can look at political family dynasties. They're bad, hard stop. It doesn't matter if you're a Clinton, Bush, Kennedy, Trump, or even in Obama, family dynasties cause a coalescence of power that's intrinsically problematic and prevent new ideas from arising from new people that weakens our democratic system. Full transparency, I personally agree with this way of thinking about political dynasties. But there's a second way to look at them. Why should we blame someone for running for public office just because their family member was a prominent politician? We should hear them out and listen to their ideas as an individual. If you feel that way, I think you'll find this video helpful. For this video, I'm not going to hold Bill accountable for mistakes or accomplishments his brother or father made unless we know he was a part of the decision-making process behind them or has publicly spoken out about the issue. I should also tell you that I have a I have friends who are personally invested in Bill Daly winning this election. I don't think it affects the way I approach this video, but you should know that. Let's get back to the episode. I'm in Bridgeport, home base of the Daly family. Early in his career, Bill gained a reputation for being politically savvy. In 1980, Bill successfully ran his brother's campaign to be Cook County's state attorney, overcoming then-Mayor Jane Burns' endorsement of his opponent, Ed Burke. Yeah, the same Ed Burke. It was an impressive win, and Bill gained a reputation for being calm and cool-headed, which was in contrast to Rich's loud and impulsive personality. In 1983, when Rich first ran and eventually lost to Harold Washington for mayor, Bill didn't allow campaign messaging to make racial appeals to white voters. It would have been really easy to, given the racial tensions at the time. Bill even considered running for mayor in 1989, but deferred to his older brother Rich when he decided to run instead. After Rich was elected mayor, Bill was a key advisor for his brother throughout his career. But Bill had been making a name for himself in national politics. In the 1984 presidential, Walter Mondale's campaign brought Bill on as an aide. In 1987, Bill was the national political director for Joe Biden's short-lived presidential run. In 1990, Bill briefly dipped out of politics to be the vice chairman and eventually president of the Amalgamated Bank. You'll notice a trend with him oscillating between the banking finance world and politics. Two years into Bill's banking job, then-Governor Bill Clinton approached him and asked for his help in his 1992 presidential campaign, and Bill Daley delivered. He was the chairman of the Clinton campaign in Illinois and won the state in both the Democratic primary and the general election. After Bill Clinton won the presidential, Bill Daley quit his job at Amalgamated Bank and was ready for the next big job that was almost certainly waiting for him, to be in President Clinton's cabinet as the transportation secretary. Tom Brokaw even went on the evening news and reported that Bill had gotten the job, but the call from the president never came. The job instead went to a former Denver mayor. Older brother Rich lost his temper at the president, but Bill Daley kept his cool. As consolation, Bill Clinton named Bill Daley to the board of Fannie Mae, where he made between $200,000 and half a million dollars in stocks and stock options over the course of four years. But his greatest accomplishment was his next job, flying to DC to be Bill Clinton's NAFTA czar. Bill Clinton wanted to pass the North American Free Trade Agreement in his first term, but Congress was skeptical. Bill Daley was brought in to make it work, and he did. Bill built an organized war room, gave Clinton a list of congressmen to call and notes on how to persuade them, and formed a strategy to get NAFTA passed in both the House and the Senate. He succeeded in four months. Vice President Al Gore said that Bill deserved virtually 100% of the credit. Nobody thought we could get NAFTA, but he was able to pull it out of the bag. And the president rewarded him with a cabinet position that Bill Daley had wanted even more, Secretary of Commerce, a position that Bill held from 1997 through 2000. At the end of his term, he was asked by Vice President Al Gore to chair his presidential campaign in 2000. He did, and I'm sure you remember how that went down. But this race is simply too close to call. And until the results, the recount is concluded and the results of Florida, Florida become official, our campaign continues. Some say Bill did good work in being the adult in the room and disciplining an unruly staff. 
Others say he cost Al Gore the election by not featuring Bill Clinton more and for not having a strategy in handling third party candidate Ralph Nader. After that tumultuous election, Bill jumped back into the private sector. In 2002, he was appointed to be the chairman of SBC Communications, now AT&T, and earned $1.2 million a year. In 2004, he moved on to be the Midwest chairman for J.P. Morgan Chase, and then was the head of the Corporate Responsibility Program from 2007 to 2010. And then in 2011, something big happened. My new chief of staff, Bill Daly. Bill Daly was appointed to be Obama's chief of staff. While his appointment was certainly an accomplishment, his work as chief of staff was not great. He resigned in just over a year. I'll get into his work as chief of staff in just a bit. But after his work in the White House, he ran to be Illinois governor in 2014 and dropped out in just about three months. And most recently, he's been a managing partner at another bank, Argentier Capital. So that's Bill's resume and accomplishments. But what are things that are concerning? Let's start with his work as the president's chief of staff. It seemed like a mess from the beginning. Republicans were happy that Barack Obama picked Bill. Bill came from a background of finance and banking and was politically more middle of the road. But progressives were upset that the president wasn't doubling down on his tough stance on large corporations, since Bill's hire seemed to be a way of extending an olive branch to the banking world. Like, for example, Bill Daly was reportedly against the creation of the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, or the CFPB. The CFPB was created in the aftermath of the recession, when President Obama appointed Elizabeth Warren to set up a new agency to protect average citizens from predatory financial practices. The CFPB has forced financial institutions to pay back $12 billion to regular people who've been cheated. But when Bill was asked about the CFPB during his time at JP Morgan, Bill said, his boss believed that sufficient consumer safeguards were already on the books. And while we're on the recession, Bill made $15 million from 2009 to 2011. While the rest of the country suffered, he was a banker making a lot of money. That just doesn't sit well with me. Bill also had a troubling episode as chief of staff around women's reproductive rights. When Barack Obama was trying to push through the ACA, there was a proposal that required church-run hospitals and universities to provide their employees free birth control. Bill Daly seemed to be against it. He set up a meeting of four men, the president, the vice president, himself, and the New York Archbishop to convince the president that the new policy would cost him Catholic voters. The president's senior female advisors were understandably upset, and Barack Obama went on to defy Bill's wishes. Finally, Bill was kind of pushed out of his role as chief of staff. Unlike Rahm Emanuel before him, Bill Daly was more hands-off and ran the White House more like a CEO. He also just didn't get along with the president's inner circle. And about his NAFTA accomplishment? I don't know a lot about international trade agreements, but NAFTA was opposed by progressives and unions at the time. Right now, Elizabeth Warren is fighting to renegotiate NAFTA's terms. I say this genuinely. I'm not sure if passing NAFTA should be seen as a progressive accomplishment for Bill. I haven't even brought up Bill's connections to Rich Daly. He's been kind of all over the place. Before entering the mayoral race, Bill Daly described the parking meter deal as good business. As I mentioned in a previous video, it wasn't. The deal privatized 36,000 parking meters by leasing them out for 75 years for $1.2 billion. The deal ended up being a disaster for the city. Chicago's controversial parking meter deal is costing the city and taxpayers millions of dollars, 41 million so far, and that's climbing. Yeah, the, the city just got ripped off. Five months later, Bill described the parking meter deal as a mistake he wouldn't make. This was after he announced he was running for mayor. But the parking meter deal may have also benefited Bill's son. The deal was sold to a venture called Chicago Parking Meter, or CPM, an investment firm led by Morgan Stanley. The public finance chief of Morgan Stanley, Bill Daly Jr. Nepotism in Chicago? Unheard of. Speaking of nepotism, in 1974, the Sun-Times reported that answers had been changed from an insurance broker's exam that Bill Daly had taken years earlier. The person who changed the answers reportedly did so at the bidding of a state senator who was trying to curry favor from Bill's dad. Bill wasn't accused of any wrongdoings, but it goes to show how he's benefited from his father's questionable ways. In early 2018, Bill thought it was unfair that Ron solely criticized his older brother for the pension crisis that the city currently faces. But when Bill decided to run for mayor, he said this about his older brother. He did a lot of things wrong. He didn't solve the pension problem. I gave you the headline. Bill also hasn't released his tax returns. Quite honestly, it's difficult for me to take his ethics reforms proposal seriously if he doesn't release his tax returns. It's easy to call for transparency from others, but if you're not willing to take the lead yourself, that seriously concerns me. 
Be sure to watch episode six on tax returns. Ugh. Bill Daley was also on Republican Bruce Rauner's transition team when he was elected to be governor in 2014. I think Bill articulates his own theory on politics better than anyone else. In 2009, Bill wrote an op-ed for the Washington Post after Alabama Representative Parker Griffith switched from the Democratic to the Republican Party. Bill warned, the Democratic Party, my lifelong political home, has a critical decision to make. Either we plot a more moderate, centrist course, or risk electoral disaster not just in the upcoming midterms, but in many elections to come. He ended the op-ed by saying, The leaders of the Democratic Party need to move back toward the center, and in doing so, set the stage for the many years' worth of leadership necessary to produce the sort of pragmatic change the American people actually want. Bill doesn't apologize for who he is, a centrist Democrat from a political dynasty. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you think more people should learn about Bill Daly, please share this video. This web series is entirely funded by you, the audience, so if these are videos that you like, please consider donating on my Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, excited for the next video.